couldn't dance We sang the dirge for you You did not cry We prepared a place for you At our table so fair But you didn't come My name's Tommy Sides, and I'd like to welcome you to our program today entitled Tommy Sides at the Pond. And today we're going to be talking about a very important subject found in Scripture. It's a subject that Peter himself, one of the great apostles, brought up to Jesus. And he said in Mark 10, 28, to Jesus, he said, We have left everything to follow you. And that's the question that I would like to ask you today. Have you left everything to follow the Lord? You know, most people today, when they get saved and accept the Lord in their heart, they say, well, you know, I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. And I have him in my heart. And I go to church. Maybe I even give the church a little bit of money here, this and that, you know. But, you know, God wants more than that. He wants your whole heart. He wants everything. One of the Old Testament laws, the greatest, Jesus said, was to, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And that's what we need to do. Now, a rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10, this is the reason that Peter had asked or said this statement, Lord, we've left everything to follow you. Just before that, a rich young ruler came to Jesus and he said Lord what must I do to be saved Jesus looked at him and said well first of all you need to honor your father and mother and you don't need to steal and you shouldn't covet and the rich young ruler said well all these things I've done since I was a boy Jesus looked at him and said well one thing you lack Give all of your wealth that you have, give it all to the poor, and then come and follow me. Well, the scripture says that the rich young ruler went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus turned to his disciples and said, It is impossible for a rich man to be saved. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man. To enter into eternal life. Well, this really amazed the disciples, but Jesus qualified that by saying, none of these things are possible with man, but with God all things are possible. In other words, with God and the Holy Spirit working in anyone's life, it is possible to be saved, even for a rich man. But Jesus said, you know, why do you think Jesus said that? Well, I was thinking about that, and Aren't, aren't people the average person on the street? Aren't we like awed by stuff? <laughs> Don't we just love to have things? We love to have money because money buys things. And we get distracted by things, don't we? And um, this man was very distracted by all his wealth. And Jesus knew it. So Jesus called him on it. And he went away. And Jesus said to Peter, I tell you the truth. No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me in the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields. And with them, what? Persecutions. Now, Jesus preached a little bit of prosperity here. And, uh, but you know, I'm not really a prosperity preacher. But he qualified that too, didn't he? He said, yeah, you know what? When I take something away, I give it back in this present age. But I give it back with persecutions. Because as Christians, we are going to be persecuted. And that's one thing. We don't live an easy life here on earth, do we, friends, as Christians? And we've heard a little bit too much of an easy gospel in these last days. I think of Keith Green, the great gospel artist. And if you don't know his music, look him up. But Keith Green said that I've made, he had a song that said, make my life a prayer to you. That's what we need to do. When we give up everything for the Lord, 
what are we doing? We're making our lives a prayer unto the Lord. That should be our goal. Every day when we wake up, say, Lord, make my day a prayer to you. Let everything that I do please you. Now, none of us are perfect, and we all fall here and there. But we need to keep going, just like Peter. He, he had problems, but he kept going. And what else did Jesus say? He said, but many who are first now will be last in the kingdom. In other words, many who are first now, like that rich young ruler, he's first. Don't, don't you know, people with money, they're the ones that get all the attention, aren't they? Even in church. But Jesus said, many who are first now in the kingdom will be least. But many who are least now, that little grandma in the church that nobody seems to care about, she's the one that's praying for each service. You know, we overlook little grandma, but you know what? God sees the heart, doesn't he? And that's important to realize. And so, I want to also say that God is not into percentages. The Old Testament says that we give 10%. But you know what? <laughs> Jesus told the rich young ruler, give it all away and then come and follow me. But later on in Luke chapter 19, Zacchaeus, a little guy, and he was a chief, chief tax collector. He was a very rich guy. He heard that Jesus was in the area and he ran and he tried to look and he tried to look over the crowd and he couldn't. And so he ran ahead. Now, those little feet, boy, they just started running. And he ran and he climbed a sycamore tree, a fig sycamore tree, climbed up in the branches. And when Jesus was walking by, Jesus looked up into the tree. And without even ever meeting Zacchaeus, Jesus knows all things, you know. And he looked up and he looked at Zacchaeus. He said, Zacchaeus, in this big crowd of people, he said, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. Because today, you, I've got to have dinner with you at your house. Boy, Zacchaeus was like all happy. He come down that tree and he took off and he showed Jesus where he lived. They sat down to a feast. And you know what the Bible says? That when that feast was over, Zacchaeus was so awed by the Lord, by the Lord Jesus and the way he was and the way he spoke, he stood up in front of all of his dinner guests and he said, you know what, Lord, I have something to say. He says, I realize now where I failed. And I'll tell you today, from this day forth, I'm going to go and I'm going to give half of all my treasure to the poor. And then, if I've defrauded anybody, anyone at all, of anything, I'm going to give them four times as much as what I took from them. And you know, Jesus stood up and he said, Today, salvation has come to this house. Zacchaeus was willing to give half of all that he owned to the poor but you know he even said if I've defrauded I'm gonna give back so the poor man probably only ended up with 10% of what he owned after all it was said and done but he had a heart for the Lord and you know the Lord is not calling us to give 10% or 20% he wants it all but he'll, 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 he wants us to give it all to him and then let him have it but you know what the Lord, the Lord is gracious. Some people he's going to require 100%. He's going to require 10% from others, 20% from others. But you know what? He wants it all. He wants you to give it all. And then what? it's up to him. It's his business what he takes. Like me, I came here to South Africa and I'm living here now. We're putting together an album called Stranded No More. It'll be out soon. And probably by the time you watch this, it might already be out. Stranded No More. And a great gospel album that uh, South Africans here that are my arranger and different musicians and people they've come together around me and and together we've done an American slash South African project and I wrote all the songs but I had to leave South uh, I had to leave the United States in order for this dream to happen I was a truck driver back home and I used to write songs on the road but I would have never uh, found my dream had I not been willing to give up everything, sell it at a yard sale, and come over here and live. I only got to bring a couple, two, three of my suitcases with me. And sometimes God wants you to step out. Sometimes God wants you to step out in faith. 
You have to step out, friends. You can't just be in your comfort zone. You can't just stay where it's comfortable. You have to be willing to step out and be willing to give and be willing to be a doer of the word. You know, like the book of James says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. And don't forsake God, okay? Because that's another thing that you don't want to do. You don't want to be a Demas. Demas left Paul and because he loved this present world. You don't want to love this present world. The Bible says also in James that if you love this present world, the love of the Father is not in you. And remember too that no matter what, you're going to have persecutions. Okay, that's what, that's what even Jesus said in Mark 10. And Paul said it in 2 Timothy 3.12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Suffer persecutions. You're going to suffer persecutions if you stand for the Lord. But if you just give it all to the Lord, He will help you. He will guide you through. And also, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men. We suffer reproach because we trust in Him. Men are not going to love you. Men are not going to like you. The world is not going to love you and, and give you a parade because you love the Lord. It's going to spit on you like it, it spat on our Lord. But we need to stay faithful, friends. Stay faithful in Jesus. Read your word, okay? Read the Bible. This is God's word to us. Read it. Put it in your heart. And then go out and follow him and attend church. Find a church. I love you. It's been great to be here with you and to share with you by this pond here in South Africa. And I hope to see you again. God bless you. Turn from your sin Why don't you walk through my door It's all open once again Why do you stand there so lonely Like a bird with broken wings For I've given you everything Even my nail-scarred hands so wash your soul clean in me We can still be friends Yeah, we can still be friends